Hi everyone, it's me, Marcy Lamberson, and today we are going to make an Easter bead. Well, or springtime bead. It's going to be a bunny in a basket, and easy and fun and surface decoration. So, let me turn this around and I am going to show you just how to do it. Well, let's start with the bead itself. Let's bring this up and look at it right here. See the little purple basket? This is on a blue background. We're going to use a slightly different color, a little white bunny peeking out, a little bit of grass around the edge if you want. Very, very simple. So what I'm going to do now is put the phone into the holder so we can start recording. Hang on a sec. Let me get that done. This looks about right. Now you can see a little bit more of my station than you probably should. It's kind of messy, but that's the way it goes. So what I'm going to be using for this is, oh, this is really simple. This is kind of a minty color or an aqua would be pretty or any spring color that you like. This will be the beads background color. Then I have one encased stringer. It's white with clear around it and pulled out. This is going to be the bunny. If you don't encase it, it's perfectly okay too. In fact, that would be just as easy. I have a little bit of pink just for um, the insides of the ears and possibly on the cheeks. I have some purple encased stringer. This one started out as white and it was encased with um, oh, ink blue. However, you can use any color you want. The reason why I encased it was then it kind of, I can uh, indent on it and make it look a little bit more like a basket, but you don't have to do that either. And then I have a little bit of green if I want to add some grass to it. And I've got my basic white in case I change my mind and go, no, I'm not going to use my encased stringer, I'll just use plain white. Sometimes I change my mind in the middle of the bead, and obviously that's definitely okay as far as I'm concerned. So, one more peek at the bead. That looks like you can see it pretty well, and I'm going to light my torch and we can get started. Okay, so let me lift my microphone up a little bit closer. This should be easier to hear me light the torch and again I haven't cleaned my torch I feel a little bit bad about it but I've been recording these videos instead and hopefully tomorrow I'll get a chance to clean it up I don't have my little tiny pick that goes right in there and um, that will clean it out fine for me but as for right now we're just gonna get going with this and get these recorded while we can I am going to use a 330 second mandrel, which is a nice and easy mandrel to use, and we'll put some of this on it. I just like this color a whole lot. I think it's pretty. I'm using Dip and Go Blue Sludge. Um, this is just kind of a traditionally shaped bead that we're doing, so not necessary. I use the Dip and Go because I normally am doing sculptural beads. And I really think it's perfect for that, but that's the only kind of bead release I have currently. Fusion, something similar to that, would work just as well in this situation. So I'm going to work a little bit farther out here because I've got all of this extra gas coming out, and uh, that doesn't make the bead as pretty if it, I get it too close. It will turn it kind of gray. We don't want that. So you saw me heat my bead release, and I'm applying the glass. My rod is perpendicular to my mandrel, or pretty close to it. And I've preheated my mandrel with the bead release on it. When you don't heat it up enough and you have a light color, especially you've probably seen it in white, all of a sudden you get all those bubbles popping up. Isn't that the biggest pain in the neck? You don't want that. So the way to not have that or to minim 
minimalize it is if you heat up your bead release prior to it. So this is approximately the length. Maybe we'll add a little bit more. Let's see, a little bit longer. Let's widen this up you know, a little bit this way. So as I said, any color is a good color. The one thing that I think about is what colors am I using for my decoration? And for this one, I'm with having deep purple and white, a medium color for a background should work fine. I want to be sure that I have enough contrast going on. And that's the main thing. And if you can see, this particular rod is lighter on one side and slightly darker on the other, which adds some striations into the background. So we'll make it just a little more interesting that way too. So we're heating up the glass and applying it. And on the last bead that I demoed for my YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe, please. It's that red button down below on the YouTube page. Anyhow, for the last one, I used kind of a periwinkle color, so I wanted a little variation in it this time, another color, just for fun. And any kind of spring color looks appropriate. So we're just gonna keep putting this glass on. I made kind of an Easter egg shape on the last one, and I think I'm going to do something similar again this time, unless I change my mind at the last minute. But that shape is good for making a basket. I'm just adding a little bit more. I've got to make this thicker. I like the length of it, but I just need more glass on it. And this glass isn't melting as quickly as I thought it would. Sometimes you get these soft colored glasses and they just melt faster than you can keep up. This one's a little bit slower than that. I'm kind of used to the speedy stuff. So don't forget, um, you can subscribe to my station. What I was going to tell you was, there's a little bell that you can find on the YouTube page. And if you click on that, it will let you know whenever I have a new tutorial up, because that's all I have on this station. So feel free to click on the little bell symbol and that will, that way you won't miss anything that I put up. Okay, got a little more glass to add. And then what we're going to do is press it with my parallel mashers. But we've got more glass to add first. And then we've got to marver it. Of course, you've got to do that. We're at almost two thirds of a rod of glass. We're going to go even a little bit more, I think. I think because I made this so long, maybe that's why it seems, I made this a little taller than usual. I guess I wanted to be sure to get the bunny inside of there. And you see that I talk about encasing a lot of stringers. For me, that gives me a couple of things. Sometimes you don't want to do it, but a lot of times encasing gives you just a little bit more room to play with. Um, because it's sitting on top of the clear, or I generally use clear for encasing. And that way, if you don't melt it all the way in, you can kind of push that color around a little bit more if you have it as a stringer or something. So I like the versatility of that. Okay, let's marber this and see where we are. I'm gonna use my Cote Marver. Isn't that a cool marver? Uh, I like it because it's got all the metal. It gives me a long length and a nice width to use. And this, I believe, is like a Japanese marver. And um, it's available in a couple of different places in the United States. And I am not sure about other countries. So what I'm doing is I'm marvering it so it's a little thinner at the top. 
and a little wider at the bottom. And if it's a little freeform and not perfect, it doesn't matter to me. If it doesn't matter to you, I'm totally cool with that. And can you see, because there was the dark and the light on the glass, you see the light and then it's darker there, you get those striations in it, which are kind of pretty, kind of different. So let's heat this up and we're gonna put a nice glow, but it's not gonna be soupy so that we can press it down. And don't forget that because see how it's shaped like this, when you press it, this is wider, so this will get a lot wider, then this will become wider because there's less glass around it. I'm not sure whether I described that right, but you'll see when you mush something this shape, you'll see the difference. It's wider where there's thicker glass and it doesn't widen as much when the glass is thinner, which is really quite logical when you think about it. Okay, so let's press this. It's almost rosy enough. I like to see a nice glow to it. Then I press it with my parallel, who will say that one, mashers. And it's making kind of a little bit of an egg shape. I just kind of like this shape this time of year. So you can see what that looks like. Kind of pretty. It does have some little lines on it from where the metal made chill marks. So what I'm doing is just holding it for a few seconds closer to the cones and it erases the chill marks. So let's do the other side and erase those chill marks also. Okay, we are done with the mashers now. Okay, so next we look at what order are we gonna do things in? And for me, it's pretty simple. I like to do the basket handle first and then the basket and then the bunny, but before, even before the basket, I like to put a dot. We're going to do the bunny in the solids for this part at least. I want to put where his head's going. So I'm thinking the basket goes about here. The handle goes around. So the head's going to go just off the middle a little bit. And I want it to be pretty good size. And that way you can see the face a little bit better. So I'm heating up a little bit of white, and we're going to put that down, but we aren't going to put the ears down yet, because the ears come, they're going to go over the basket handle. So don't forget, if you put down too much white, you just don't need to press it in as far. Let's give it a nice bunny head right there. And I'm just making a big old dot, and I'm holding my bead so it is parallel to the table. If you get it off center a little bit, not a problem. Your bunny doesn't have to be right in the center, does it? Okay, so we've got that. And a good use, if you, you have stringer or even in case stringer, I'm gonna put just a tiny bit of the body down below it. Then that way, if the basket doesn't come all the way up, the basket's gonna cover this part of the body or if it needs to show a little bit, it will be down. So I just put a couple little lines there so it looks like there's something there and not a head floating right in the middle. You can do those lines first and then the dot, or you can do the dot first and then the lines. See, we're not doing a whole body, but we're just indicating that a body goes there. Okay, so the next thing. First of all, I'm going to turn down my torch just a little bit, a little bit easier to control. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my purple. Okay, so the basket goes here on down, and then the handle goes around the edge. So we're going to start below where the basket itself starts, the main basket, so it's easier to cover the edges where you attach it. Which means I'm going to heat up my bead where my glass is going to go a little bit, and I'm going to start below the bottom of the head. And I'm going to very gently just follow a circle around for the basket handle. Goes below the head. See how that works? Doesn't have to be perfect. This is a little thinner than this. I'd really like it to be a little bit thicker. So I'm just adding another layer on top of it. 
And then I'm going to heat up the back side to make sure my bead stays warm, making sure that the bottom and the top of the beads have plenty of heat. Okay, so we've got the basket handle down. Woohoo! And we make sure that it's in. If it doesn't look like it's on firmly, take a tool and just gently press it a little bit. You don't want to press it in. You don't want to melt it in. You could if you wanted to, but I like things to stand up a little. So I'm just barely warming it up and pressing it on. Okay, so let's make the basket below it also. We're going to add the paws later on. So this is going to go straight across and it's going to start right where the basket handle is and go straight across underneath the head. Boom. See how that works? And we're going to continue around and make the rest of the basket. It's not going to be huge. So I did the bottom of the basket too. And I'm going to press this, the end was sticking up, so I just heated it gently and pressed it in. And now I just need to make the rest of the basket going across. And because this is a cased cane with a darker transparent on the outside and a lighter on the inside, see how it's darker on the edges and lighter in the middle. I'm just going to do horizontal, horizontal lines across very carefully. If you melt it in, don't worry about it. Turn your torch way down. You see how hot that is right there with the red? I'm going to let that cool while I heat up the back of the bead. I don't want my glass that hot and put down some other glass right next to it. That's how you get messes. Okay, so this is a little balled up on the end. So I'm going to straighten it out a little bit. Just take a little extra off the edge. And heat up the back side, the top the bottom especially. A little heat around the other part. Here we go. We've got another line for this basket. Okay. So, we've got the basket on. It's covered in the purple and I heat it up and just barely tap it down a bit. So it kind of looks like a basket like that. I have a little hole right there. So we're just going to add a little cover up that hole in the basket. Heat it up just a little bit, tap it down. So to make it look more baskety, well before we do that, we're going to heat up the back side, the top side, the top and bottom, the middle, just a little bit in the middle, but mostly the back side. Okay, so to make a basket, I'm just going to make some vertical lines. I already have the horizontal lines, just kind of spaced out. So, a little chop here, a little chop there, wherever you think the basket line should go. As if it's been woven. Don't spend a lot of time on it. It's not worth it. But see how this way now, it looks like there's a basket? And that was just because I pressed in. And when you press in, it makes a darker line because you, the, what you have cased the bead with is darker, so it makes it a darker line. Okay, heat up the back of the bead. So now we have this. We're going to need some indentations for the bunny eyes. And I know I've got a pokey tool around here. So I'm going to heat up just the white. And towards the middle, I'm going to make two indentations because I like my faces down kind of low. One, two, in the middle. Heat up the back side while that's cooling. And I also should have found my black stringer. I got some right here on the end. We'll use that. That was the one thing I forgot to put in. So, I think I want some cheeks on this bunny tee because if you know me, I like fat cheeks on my animals to make them cute. So I'm heating up a little bit of the white, and I'm going to add them below the eyes where the holes are. I haven't put the black in for the eyes yet, because if I'm melting any of these cheeks 
in, that could melt the black eye. So I wanted to wait a minute. And while those cheeks are cooling, I'm heating the back of the bead, the top of the bead, the bottom of the bead, all over. And then I give the bunny face just a little bit of a, a little more heat to melt in those cheeks, just a tiny bit. And I would like a little bit of pink on those cheeks. Now my favorite color to use is called Desert Pink. You can only find it in a few places, so it's kind of hard to deal with. If you want something else that's muted, a sim ginger, creation is messy ginger, something like that, or just a really soft pink, when you're going on white. The thing is, if you're using ivory, you've got to be super duper careful. So, I'm not sure what pink this is. Let's use a little of this. It looks soft enough. I'm heating just a tiny bit. And I'm going to add just a tiny dot of pink on the outside of each cheek size. And then I'm going to heat the back of the bead. Oh, are you tired of hearing this yet? And then I'm going underneath the flame and just barely touching that dot and letting it melt in the dot of pink on each side. I'm not melting in the dots where the eyes are going. I'm just hitting the cheeks so that they have a little bit of color in them. Okay. So it's hard to see whether the cheeks are going to be pink yet. They're still cooling. I'm hoping some of that pink will show up. I'm going to go from right below, once it cools a little bit, and just warm it up a tiny bit in case it strikes. If it doesn't, we're going to say, eh, the heck with it. We're going to keep going. And we're going to also put in, before we do the eyes, because we're we might as well get some of the other details taken care of because the eyes will melt in easily. Don't forget we wanted to put in some paws there. So I'm heating up. You could do either a thick stringer or your paste white. And we're going to go just a dot over the edge where the paws are going to go. On each side of the head, a nice little dot. If you have a little tool to kind of tuck in the edge so it looks like it connects more with the bunny, that's good. I'm just flattening a little to widen it, and then I'm pushing in below so that the poor bunny has paws that are connected to it. If you need a little more, add another little dot of white. It doesn't hurt anything. And I'm going to need some ears, too. Now, here's the thing. I have this tool that I really love. It's called Concave Convex Pliers. See how there's an indentation here and then this is rounded? It's used in jewelry and it generally retails for under $20. Oftentimes you can find them for about 15 US dollars. I love these because they make really good ears. If you don't have this tool or can't get it in time, you can use something as simple as a pair of needle nose pliers. You won't get the cupped part, but you'll still get that long area that you can do for squishing ears. So both work. It's just one has just a little bit more oomph to it if you happen to have it. And if you don't, it's certainly okay. So what I'm going to do is on the top oh, of the pink's coming through. It's just real soft. I'm going to make some tall dots on each side for ears. I'm going to have the ears going over the top of the, um, of the basket handle. So I left it standing up. If you need to push it down and just treat it like a regular um, line, you can do that. I'm going to take this tool and the cup part goes below. And I'm going to squeeze this and pull up at the same time to make a bunny ear. And it got a little wide, so I just pushed it in a little bit, too. Now, with this ear, I didn't have it quite planted as well as I'd like to. So I'm just going to push it down onto the head a little bit more. There we go. Now the ear is where I want it. Kind of wrapped over the basket. 
let's do the other side too. But first, I'm feeding the back, feeding the bottom, feeding the top, and adding a little bit of heat all over. Okay, so whether you're using stringer or case stringer or straight rod, I'm heating some up first before I attach it. I'm going to attach, push down, pull up. And this one doesn't have as much here, so I'm just gently melting a little bit more to add on to it. And I'm going to take my concave convex pliers with the scoop to the bottom, and I'm pushing in and pulling out to give it a little bit more here. And it was still soft, so I pushed it down a little bit too. Now, what the heck, huh? Shape it up. Go over the top of it if it's not quite right. Yeah. This side is rounder. This side is straighter. So you know what I'm going to do? Just add a little bit more so it equals that. Why not? I'm heating up just a little bit. And I'm adding it in there. Amazing what we can do. Ha! Done. Bunny face, two little pink cheeks, some little paws, some ears. If you want, you can run your pink in a line down the ears. But don't forget, keep the back, keep the bottom, keep the top, keep everything warm. Okay, so I'll show you what to do if you want to add some pink to the ears. I'm heating up the tip of the pink stringer and I'm placing it where I want it. Start. I'm just going down. You don't even have to go the entire way. You can go part way down and it will still indicate that there's some pink in it. And then adding a little bit of heat. If it's sticking out too far, you can take a sharp tool and just press in a little bit and it will give the indentation. So, before we do the next one, you know what we're doing. We're heating up the bee. Oh, I know you get tired of hearing this all the time. So let's do the same. You can get the end of the pink stringer, touch down where you want it to start, and go most of the way, but not the whole way. Pull up, keep the back of the bead, keep the stringer. If it doesn't go far enough in, take a sharpish blade. It doesn't have to be particularly sharp. You just run it across to get that indentation. So what do we have left? We've got some eyeballs that need to go in and grass if we want to put grass on it. So I would do the grass before the eyeballs. And the way I do that is just take a couple little dots and pull them up or do some little lines around the edges. So let's heat up the bee. Are you tired of hearing that? But will you remember it when you make this bee? And if we want to add a little bit of grass, I'm heating up just a little bit of the green. You don't, whoa, it broke on me. Save the day. So there's some green grass. We'll add a little bit more around the bottom. A little bit over here. Just the ending at the bottom where the basket ends. Adding a little bit of color. So if you have something that doesn't look quite right on the basket, you can always add a little grass there or a little plant or an Easter egg, a fat dot, and pull it out as an Easter egg. You have lots of options. Let's add the eyes. We still have the indentation for the eyes. If we needed to, we'd be able to heat that area up again and re-push in again if we want an indentation. But we still have it, luckily. And I have a thin black stringer. So what I'm going to do is first heat the bead. Oh, and now I sound like a harpy with that, but it's important. And I really don't want you to lose a bead that takes this much time. And I'm heating up just the end of this stringer. And I'm, I rest my hand on my um, 
on my torch mounted marble. spend time flexing with it, your whole beak can get cold. And you don't want that to happen. You want to see a little bit of glow. Okay, so we've got that heated. I'm going to do just a touch on the very end. And I'm resting my hand to center it. And I'm pushing it. Okay, one down. Let's reheat and do the second. Just a touch. Let's push down. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm a little bit shaky. So it helps if I have something to put my finger against just to even things out. And it's better to do a little less eye than too much. And if you get too much eye in there, what you do is you take something sharp like, oh, like a pointy tool and you melt the black in and you push it in all the way. You just keep pushing, get it nice and hot, push it all the way in, and it will disappear into your glass. And then you can put your new eye over the top. So that eye came up a little high, but it's okay now. So sometimes on bunnies, I'll put a little pink nose. Instead, I put pink cheeks, and I'm going to leave it like that. If I had made bigger paws, I would have taken my old razor and I would have cut some little paw marks in it too, but I am very happy with the way it is, other than I want a little heart on the back because I like little hearts. So I picked up my green first because that was closest and I do a dot and I'm going to do another dot right next to it. Generally they don't touch or they just barely touch. And then I heat them up and I just pull them down into a point and that makes us a nice little heart. And there we go. Thank you for joining me. You can find me on Facebook also and Instagram under Marcy Lamberson. And I teach classes, so feel free to inquire. Thanks so much. And again, here's our bee, this cute little bunny rabbit. With a little heart on the back. Once more for the bunny. And thank you for joining me. I'm Marcy Lamberson. Bye.